Have you ever wondered how the spirit of resistance was born in Jamaica? Let's rewind time to the late 15th century. The Spanish, voyaging across the vast Atlantic, stumbled upon the pristine shores of Jamaica, then inhabited by the indigenous Taino people. The arrival of the Europeans dramatically altered the course of the island's history. The Tainos, once the masters of the land, were forced into servitude, their lives irrevocably changed. Fast forward to the mid-17th century. The baton of colonial power passed from the Spanish to the British. The British, eager to exploit the island's fertile soil, introduced large-scale sugar plantations and with them, the brutal system of African enslavement. However, amidst the harsh realities of colonial rule, a formidable force of resistance was stirring. The Maroons, communities of formerly enslaved Africans who had escaped the plantations, were carving out autonomous spaces within the rugged terrains of the island's interior. Their fierce determination to resist subjugation was a beacon of hope in an era marked by oppression. At the helm of this resistance was a woman of indomitable spirit. Nanny, who would later be recognized as one of Jamaica's first national heroes. A leader of the Windward Maroons, Nanny was a beacon of strength and resilience. Her strategic prowess in guerrilla warfare was instrumental in outsmarting the British forces time and again. Nanny's leadership extended beyond the battlefield. She nurtured her community, creating a self-sufficient society that thrived amidst adversity. Her astute knowledge of herbs not only healed the wounded, but also nourished the minds and spirits of her people. Nanny's legacy of resistance set the stage for future heroes of Jamaica. From the Maroons' resistance, a new hero emerged, Samuel Sharp. In the early 19th century, amidst the turmoil of a nation grappling with the chains of slavery, Samuel Sharp rose as a beacon of hope. Born a slave, Sharp's life was marked by struggle and hardship, yet he was not deterred. A man of deep faith and conviction, he utilized his position as a Baptist deacon to sow seeds of resistance among his fellow slaves. Sharp's charisma and eloquent speech earned him respect and influence, which he used to inspire a vision of freedom. His belief that freedom is a right, not a privilege, resonated deeply with the enslaved population. He began to orchestrate a peaceful general strike, a plan that would later evolve into the Christmas Rebellion of 1831. This rebellion, though initially intended to be passive, ignited a flame of resistance across the island. Thousands of slaves rose in unison, disrupting the sugar industry and shaking the very foundations of the British colonial system. The revolt was brutally suppressed, but the message was loud and clear. The slaves were no longer willing to live in bondage. The aftermath of the rebellion was tumultuous and tragic. Samuel Sharp was arrested and sentenced to death. His last words, I would rather die upon yonder gallows than live in slavery, echoed his unyielding spirit and determination. He was hanged in May 1832, becoming a martyr for the cause of freedom. His sacrifice was not in vain. The Christmas Rebellion sent shockwaves across the British Empire, highlighting the inhumane conditions of slavery and the burning desire for freedom among the slaves. The rebellion was a significant factor in the subsequent abolition of slavery throughout the British Empire, marking a turning point in Jamaica's history. Samuel Sharp's martyrdom was not in vain. It signaled the end of an era. His legacy lives on, a testament to the indomitable spirit of the Jamaican people and their quest for freedom and justice. The abolition of slavery did not mean equality. Enter Paul Bogle and George William Gordon. In the mid-19th century, Jamaica was a land of stark contrasts. The echoes of freedom rang hollow for many as the newly emancipated found themselves trapped in a cycle of poverty and disenfranchisement. Paul Bogle, a Baptist deacon, and George William Gordon, a wealthy mixed-race politician, emerged as champions for the oppressed. Bogle, deeply moved by the plight of the poor, led a peaceful protest in October of 1865, known as the Morant Bay Rebellion. Thousands marched, demanding fair treatment and equal rights. But their cries for justice were met with brutal force. Gordon, a member of the Jamaican legislature, used his platform to advocate for the rights of the disenfranchised. His speeches echoed with calls for access to land and fair wages. 
His advocacy, however, made him a target. He was unjustly implicated in the Morant Bay Rebellion and alongside Bogle was executed. Their deaths sent shockwaves through the island and beyond. In the face of such brutality, one might expect defeat. Yet the execution of Bogle and Gordon ignited a spark of change. Their sacrifice was not in vain. Outrage over their deaths reached the British Parliament, leading to a critical investigation into the handling of the Morant Bay Rebellion. This scrutiny ultimately resulted in significant changes in colonial policies, marking a turning point in Jamaica's fight for equality. Bogle and Gordon were posthumously named national heroes of Jamaica, their faces immortalised on the island's currency. Their legacy is a testament to the power of resilience, courage and the relentless pursuit of justice. They remind us that the path to equality may be fraught with challenges, but it's a path worth treading, a cause worth fighting for. Bogle and Gordon, through their sacrifice, catalyzed important changes in Jamaica. Their stories continue to inspire, reminding us that the fight for equality is as crucial today as it was then. Their spirit lives on in the heart of the Jamaican people, a beacon of hope lighting the way towards a more just and equitable future. The struggle for equality continued into the 20th century, led by heroes like Marcus Garvey. In the early decades of the 20th century, a new chapter of advocacy began, helmed by the charismatic and visionary leader Marcus Garvey. Born in the rural parish of St Anne's Bay, Garvey rose to prominence as a tireless advocate for black empowerment and a pioneer of the Pan-African movement. Garvey's philosophy was rooted in a potent blend of nationalism and self-reliance. He championed the idea that people of African descent, wherever they may be in the world, shared a common destiny and should strive for collective upliftment. This perspective formed the bedrock of his Universal Negro Improvement Association, an organisation that promoted black pride, economic independence and a return to African heritage. His audacious vision extended to the establishment of the Black Star Line, a shipping line intended to facilitate trade among the African diaspora and ultimately the return of African descendants to their ancestral lands. Although the venture faced considerable challenges, it symbolized Garvey's unwavering commitment to black economic empowerment. Garvey's influence wasn't contained within the Caribbean Sea or the Atlantic Ocean. It rippled outwards, reaching the shores of the United States and beyond, inspiring future civil rights movements and leaders. Figures like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. acknowledged his impact, and his teachings continue to resonate in contemporary discourses on race and identity. Garvey's legacy as a trailblazer for black empowerment was not without controversy or opposition. Yet his unwavering belief in the strength and potential of the African diaspora remained an enduring beacon of hope. His call for unity, self-determination and pride in one's heritage continues to resonate with people globally, echoing the spirit of resilience and empowerment. In the annals of Jamaica's history, Garvey stands as a towering figure, a testament to the indomitable spirit of the Jamaican people. His story is a crucial chapter in the ongoing narrative of black empowerment, a legacy that continues to shape the world today. Garvey's philosophy of self-determination continues to inspire people globally. The fight for independence was led by two formidable figures, Alexander Bustamante and Norman Manley. These two titans of Jamaica's history were at the forefront of the labor movement, a critical part of the country's journey to independence. Bustamante, a charismatic leader, was known for his fierce advocacy for workers' rights. He championed the cause of the common man, leading strikes and protests that highlighted the dire conditions of the labouring class. His relentless efforts led to the formation of the Bustamante Industrial Trade Union, a powerful voice for the workers and a pivotal force in shaping Jamaica's labour laws. Parallel to Bustamante's work in the labour movement, Norman Manley was carving his own path to independence. A brilliant lawyer and a visionary, Manley was a staunch believer in self-governance and democracy. He was instrumental in the formation of the People's National Party, which advocated for universal adult suffrage and social justice. Their legacy is a testament to their unyielding spirit and unwavering commitment to their nation. They were more than just leaders, they were torchbearers of change, embodying the hopes and aspirations of a people yearning for freedom.
Bustamante and Manley's leadership paved the way for modern Jamaica. Their stories, along with those of the other national heroes, are woven into the very fabric of Jamaica, a vibrant tapestry of resilience, courage, and a relentless pursuit of freedom.